Okay, so I thought I'd do a review of the Paperlike screen protector. This is a completely independent review. I've not been sponsored, I've not been sent the screen protector by Paperlike. Um, I've just heard good things about it and so I wanted to test it out for myself. Now one of the, the supposed reasons for getting this screen protector is that it feels more like paper like the name suggests. So really the screen or the surface of the iPad, the actual screen, is very glassy obviously and some people have found it unpleasant or don't like the experience of drawing straight on to the glass. Although the, the tip of the Apple Pencil is slightly rubbery, you know, it still feels like you're drawing on glass. It's very obviously a very slippery, very smooth surface. So the idea of this screen protector is that it has just that little bit of tooth, a little bit of friction delivered when you actually draw upon the surface. So it just feels a little bit more authentically like paper. Now, people have been asking me for years now, really, ever since I've been sort of putting videos here on YouTube, what screen protector I recommend, or what screen protector I use. And in truth, I haven't used one up until now. So this is interesting for me. That was one of the reasons why I decided to get it. I've had scratches on my screens and to a certain extent, it's not really bothered me, but I just thought it was about time. I really dug into this and, and saw what the big deal is. So this particular screen protector from Paperlike is $36, 29 euros or about 26 pound in the UK which is not cheap. You can definitely get cheaper screen protectors out there and you can get perhaps ones that are a bit more protective because this is just a, a plastic film. It's not tempered glass. It's not going to protect it against heavy impacts in the same way that a tempered glass screen protector might. However, there are other advantages to perhaps having it as a, a thin film, having it as a plastic film, and I'll get into some of those potential advantages in this video. So first of all, I'm just going to address the, the texture that you get from the screen protector itself. So I'll just open the iPad, go into one of my canvases just for demonstration purposes. Now, one of the things that appears or is apparent to me the most, actually more than the, the feeling itself, because in, in some ways I'm relatively underwhelmed by the texture. The difference between drawing on this and drawing on the just the glass itself is not massive. Maybe that's the effect that we're going for, but it really is a subtle difference. Now, the sound, however, is perhaps one of the differences that is important to people. Because when you're drawing on paper, you'll definitely get that, that sound. Whereas when you draw on the iPad glass, you don't really tend to hear anything. You'll hear the tapping on the screen, but there's no real texture on the glass. Therefore, when you're drawing, you wouldn't normally hear anything. Whereas now, I'm pretty sure you can probably hear that on camera. It's quite loud. There's a definite sound to that. And I think that in some ways, that's kind of the reason why you tend to think it's more like paper. The actual feeling, if, if I was to transfer from a glass screen, and unfortunately now I've got the screen protector on it, so I can't do that, but I can test it on the very edge here where the camera is, no sound at all. Put it here and the sound. And I think to a certain extent, it's the sound that gives you the impression that you're drawing on paper, because really the actual feeling of it is only incredibly subtly different. And strangely, I found that when you press on lightly, you feel it a little bit more than when you do when you press on hard. When you're pressing on harder with the Apple Pencil, you barely feel the texture at all. So in terms of, I guess, the main selling point of it being more like paper, the, the feel of it, I wouldn't say, is vastly different. But I do actually really enjoy the sound of it. Now, it sounds a strange thing. And it sounds like one of the most unimportant aspects you could imagine really from, you know, something that's trying to replicate paper. But actually, there is something really satisfying. I mean, I'm a traditional artist originally, and I grew up drawing on pa with paper and pencil. And something about that, that tactile nature of getting feedback and getting noise from the, the surface that you're drawing on is, is something that I've not really heard people talk about. But it is actually something that I found kind of satisfying in a way, in a strange way that I didn't expect. Now, another factor that perhaps is an advantage, because like I said, the main selling point of it, of it feeling different when you're drawing is, is one of the ones, one of the reasons that I found least compelling actually with the, this screen protector. But having said that, despite that, I found myself really enjoying the experience and, and actually thinking it's, it's a really pleasant way of working with your iPad. So the sound is one of them. Another one is the fact that it's more of a matte surface. You don't get the reflective glare from your environment that you would with the normal iPad screen. Now, obviously they do have a coating on there to try and reduce the, the glare. It has an anti-glare coating on there on the iPad, but it comes nowhere near as close to, you know, protecting against reflections that this iPad, uh, screen protector does. And, I've really found that 
a treat actually to draw on a screen where you're not getting any any visual feedback, any reflective elements from the environment that you're working in. One of the downsides, I guess, is that you get ever so slightly a kind of it's hard to describe it, a kind of pixelated, not pixelated, but a slight grain, because there is a grain in the plastic film, and it's, it's visible to a certain extent, but it's very slight, and as soon as you open a painting, you don't notice it. I think you only really notice it when you're on more of the, the kind of home screen, and perhaps you're used to seeing the, the crystal clear outlines on the icons. Now, I've got my, my setup on here, so the whites that would normally appear are, seem to have distorted and turned blue now, so the colours are completely off on your screen, but you probably wouldn't be able to pick up the slight graininess on here anyway. But as soon as you open a painting, it's not something that you're aware of. It really isn't something that, that would bother me at all when I'm actually drawing and painting. So for the advantages it gives you in terms of you know removing the, the reflective quality of the, say if I'm using a lamp near to, because I'm working later in the evening, or even perhaps outside where you're getting some sunlight and bright reflections in the outside environment reflecting onto your screen normally, this kind of eliminates it in one swoop. And for me personally, that's going to be an absolute boon. That's going to be fantastic for me because although you're probably going to see a little bit of reflection, you know, I have a stand here that my phone is actually perched on. It's pretty primitive, my setup in actual fact. It's just a sat-nav holder with my phone perched on it. And you can see me reflected in it. And I don't like that personally. There's times where I'm working on a dark piece or a dark background and you can see my my face in the in the reflection and as a youtuber i kind of set up this channel so it's just about my artwork and so now having a screen protector that that eliminates the majority of that i'm, I'm really chuffed about that. that's really fantastic obviously that's not going to be a factor for most people but it just it demonstrates just how little reflection there is going to be now as a consequence for using this kind of screen protector one thing I also noticed is that there are a couple of scratches I've actually got on this screen and they're pretty much completely invisible now. I cannot see the scratches that have accumulated on the screen. They're not, there's not tons of them, but there's a couple of biggish ones that extend, you know, quite lengthy sort of grooves in the glass. I should have got the screen protector earlier perhaps, but I didn't and it's amazing you can take the best care in the world over your ipad over your glass screens and on your phone or your, or your tablets whatever but there's always that risk that you're going to get a scratch and yes i've got scratches on this but as soon as i put the film on it, it they kind of disappear in, in the in the midst really another thing that disappears is the fingerprints now it does acquire fingerprints through the day but nothing like as much as the the ipad glass does naturally so Yes, it does. It, you know, if you've been sort of having lunch and you've not, I don't know, if you've not washed your hands after you've been snacking on something and your finger straight onto your iPad, you're going to get slight sort of greasy fingerprints, but nothing like as pronounced as you would on the actual glass itself. And to be honest, any kind of natural oils on your hands when you're just working on the glass really stand out on the glass normally, whereas it doesn't on this. Another aspect is it's much easier to clean them off now than it is on the actual natural glass of the iPad. On the, the actual glass of the iPad, I found that I had to get sort of lint-free cloths and special cleaning products, whereas this now literally you can kind of wipe it on your T-shirt or whatever, you know, just wipe it on with anything, and it's much quicker, much easier to clean. Now these, but you know, might be important features, but perhaps the most important feature, which connects to all of the, the other elements in a way, is just how, in a way, it just becomes the the, the image is important because you become less aware of it being a glass surface. It's very strange. I guess it's a, if you're used to Wacom Cintiq products where it's much more like this kind of feel to it, so it isn't such a glaring glass quality to the screen, I guess it's closer to that. But personally, from my experience of Cintiqs, they are even grainier. The kind of graininess that I talked about on Cintiqs, I think is more apparent than this. I think this is a better kind of finish and a better immersive nature than the Wacom Cintiqs are. So now I am just feel like I'm only looking at the image that I've created. The glass kind of disappears, although it's not totally like paper. It has, it changes the quality of it completely. And that's plus with the fact that you don't get horrible dirty fingerprints on it. It doesn't reflect half as much. I've really fallen in, in love with the way it appears now. And it's a strange thing. And yes, it's not cheap as a screen protector. It's sort of $30, £30, a similar kind of range. Then, yeah, it's not cheap, but 
Do you know what? I think I'll be using this from now on. I think that I've found my new way of working. Now, like I say, I'm not sponsored by Paperlike. I, they don't owe me anything. I don't owe them anything. I'm just speaking as from an artist's point of view, and I really quite like this product. Now, as to how long it lasts for, I don't know. Will it acquire scratches? Will it need replacing often? I don't know. Will it peel at the edges? Probably. Uh, I guess that's why they send you two in the packet, because it's not going to last forever. But I think that's pretty much standard for any kind of screen protector these days anyway. Even if it's a tempered glass one, it's going to get scratches, it's going to crack. You're going to have to replace it. But much better to spend £30, $30 on a screen protector than it is hundreds of dollars, hundreds of pounds on a new screen from Apple. In terms of what you get in the pack, you get some nice instructions, although I would highly recommend you watch the video that it suggests if you go to their actual video tutorial. You get a nice cloth for cleaning. You also get a, a wet wipe in the pack and you get some stickers that help you align it properly and a kind of dust absorber sticker as well. Like I say, you get two of these. This actually got folded in the envelope through my letterbox. I thought that was gonna be an issue. You can see the crease in it. It was actually a more apparent crease on the one that I did put on the screen in the end. But actually, when you've put it on there, when I've put it on there, you cannot see any crease in it at all. So it didn't get damaged by that, which I'm delighted at. I'm hoping that it will be really long wearing because this is the way that I'm probably going to work with my iPad from now on. There are other screen protectors out there. There may be other ones that are equally as good in, or better in, in other ways. If you've got any of your own experiences of them, do leave um, suggestions in the comments for other people that are watching this video. Otherwise, I hope this has been helpful. I wish in some ways that I'd been using <laughs> this screen protector for longer, but there you go. You learn from your mistakes and I'm pretty sure I'm going to stick with it from now on. I really should be on commission from Paperlike, but there you go, I'm not. Anyway, please check out my other tutorial videos, my other test review videos. I try not load as much as possible. I am a full-time teacher at high school, so sometimes that gets limited, but I try to upload as often as possible. So please support me, press the bell notification. That way that you'll definitely be informed. You'll know when I've uploaded new content and you can keep in touch with me. Thanks for watching. Catch you back here soon. See you later.